As described in its national anthem, Namibia is a land of contrast, home to ancient mountains and gorges that rival the Grand Canyon in size and beauty. Vast savannas, green rolling hills, and bone dry deserts that run right out into the Atlantic Ocean. Here you'll find giraffe and elephants roaming freely in the north, herds of orics, springbok, desert horses in the south, and almost anywhere you look, you'll find kudu, ostrich, jackal, baboons, and warthogs lazily grazing along the roadside. With a population of approximately 2.5 million, the people of Namibia are equally varied. Tribal and ethnic groups include the indigenous Avambo, Himba, Herero, Tamara, San, and Nama, as well as the more recently introduced colored, bastards, and whites. In an area that's a bit more than twice the size of California and populated by so few, Namibia can seem vast and even primitive. Yet its major towns and cities host many of the same modern accoutrements found elsewhere in the world. Internet and mobile phone access is common. Major roads and secondary gravel roads are well maintained. Seacoast towns like Luteritz and Wafish Bay are home to modern fishing fleets and shipping ports. And rush hour traffic in Windhoek, the nation's capital, will have you believing that all of the country's 2.5 million citizens live and work in the immediate area and all travel by car at the same time. Yet small towns and settlements dot the open landscape some so remote that access can be difficult during certain times of the year. It is against this backdrop that the Namibian government attempts to provide free education to all its citizens. But what is it like to teach in a place of such wide contrast? My name is Ellen Nell. I'm a teacher at Oranjemund Private School in Oranjemund and I teach English for grades six and sevens. I've been teaching for 22 years at Oranimund Private School and um, I started teaching in 1990 so it's in total about 30 years. I am Tamara Innes. I teach at Westside High School Swakopmund which is a town in Namibia. I teach grade sevens, eights as well as grade nines. I teach them Afrikaans second language as well as English first language. I started teaching at the tender age of 21 years, so I have been in this profession now for seven years. This is my eighth year. Hi, uh, my name is Martha, my last name is Mvula, and I'm a teacher. Um, well, I've been teaching for 10 years. Um, that's before I left for studies for three years, and I'm back to teach again. My name is Mara Biekers. I'm the principal of Ambrosia Zamatenia Primary School in Oranjemund. I'm an English teacher and I'm the principal of the school. I've been teaching for 30 years now. This is my 30th year. I started teaching as a young professional back in Kitmansup, my hometown, and I've been teaching here since 1997. I was promoted into the position of principal in 2014. So this is my sixth year. I can say that I have really been inspired by my high school teachers I saw them as role models and I saw the impact they made in the lives of children. Particularly in my life, I really looked up to them and I kind of wanted to be like them. Um, Namibia is a country that is basically plagued by poverty and the only way that we can alleviate and eradicate poverty is by equipping our learners with knowledge and making them educated citizens so that they can contribute to society. Originally, I didn't want to become a teacher. I actually wanted to become a journalist like my mother and my uncle. But then I got a scholarship to study teaching and ever since I've been a teacher and uh, I just enjoy it so much because it's, it's so rewarding. I'd rather teach children than trying to, to work with adults, which I did for a short while. Um, behaving like children. So with children you, you, you know what to expect. You, you know this is how they behave and they, they want to learn, they want to absorb. So uh, that, that in itself is, is very rewarding. Uh, since my high school days I always had the passion of becoming a teacher. I always had the desire to work with children, especially with children, and to, uh, to teach. So immediately after matric I embarked on my studies and I went back to the school where I matriculated and I started teaching there. It's always been my passion and 30 years down the line it's still my passion. 
The most challenging part about my job is that basically Namibia needs more schools. Um, I have a problem with the overcrowded classrooms. Approximately 45 learners are squeezed into one small classroom and with that we face major disciplinary issues. Um, parental involvement is not as it should be. As you know, most of our learners come from homes where they have single parents and a single parent often struggles to discipline a child at home so they come with these issues to school and they disrupt the lesson and it's easy to do so in a big classroom. Okay, what else is brought about with the overcrowded classrooms? A lack of resources. Um, textbooks are insufficient. We have free education in Namibia, so we cannot ask learners to contribute or parents to contribute um, money towards the school. We have to basically rely on fundraisers and because of the finances, the lack of finances, we often do not have enough copy paper or ink that we can supply quality material for learning to our learners and that hampers education. I think the most challenging part about my job is having to be, to be a teacher at the same time as an admin. Um, I think admin work takes up so much time and you won't really have time to do a lot of other, other teaching duties when you have a lot of admin stuff. And also the fact that you want to also teach the, the, the students so much, but because of the lack of resources, you can't really do as much as you would want to do. The most challenging part about my job is the fact that we have, we have children from many different cultural backgrounds. We've got children who come here and then some of them can't even speak English properly and you have to work with all of them. We've got children with, you know, the, the, the situations in their homes are not very happy, if I can put it like that. So basically, I think you've got a, you've got a, a class with, with, let's say, 18 individuals and each one comes from a different background. Some of them speak, they all speak different languages at home and we have to get it get them all together and try to keep each child in mind when you are teaching and where they come from, um, what original, you know, their home languages. I think my, my biggest problem is that, that parents nowadays are not as involved as, as we would like them to be. Um, they see us, as some parents, I don't want to generalize, but I think many parents see us as the children's caretakers. We just cope with it, you know. It's just, it's also part of the job, is that some children are going to need a little bit more love than others. As I said, my job is twofold. I'm a teacher and I'm a principal. So what's most challenging about being a teacher is definitely resources. Um, you don't always have everything that you need, although you have the ideas. And being the principal, the main challenge is to make sure that you do the best for every single child that's at your school. And that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I love being a teacher mainly because I get to interact with so many students from different, from different backgrounds. And I interact with these students, not only while in the classroom or while teaching, but also um, through extra activities such as sports and singing. I, I conduct a choir at school sometimes, so that is actually one thing I love about being a teacher. What I love most about it is that definitely the children, to work with children and to make an impact on them. And I also celebrate every single success and achievement of every child. Because I, I'm, I take the time and effort to make sure that I know every child at my school and that I follow through on what they are doing, what are their strengths, their weaknesses and everything. So when I see a child in front of me, I must be able to call up a profile of that child the minute I make eye contact with the child. So I know the children very well, I love them very much, and I just want the best for them. And that gives me satisfaction. I love teaching. That, that's it. I'm a teacher. I never thought I wanted to be a teacher, but I, I am a teacher. That, that is my calling. Um, I love being with children. Um, 
Like I said, I prefer children to, to adults. And my best friends actually are also teachers. So that we, the best thing is that we can discuss things and, and they, they understand your situation because they are in a similar situation. But I think teaching is really a calling. Um, you either teach or you're not. I really enjoy what I'm doing. I love, I love to teach children and see the, see the light, you know, when, when, they, when they get something. And that, that is the reward. So. What I would like the whole world to know about Namibian teachers is that despite our media painting a very negative picture about our teachers, I would like them to know that our teachers are a group of dynamic and enthusiastic people. First of all, we are faced with overcrowded classrooms, a lack of resources. But regardless of those challenges, we stop at nothing to go the extra mile to provide the best possible quality education to our learners. If a learner suffers or struggles to get stationary, we take money of our own, out of our own pockets to buy it. If we would like to make our classroom environment colorful, decorated with posters, the money comes from our own pockets. If we want to use technology in our classrooms and have PowerPoint presentations, we buy our own LCD projectors, which is a quality one is valued at 6,000 or more. They teach the holistic child. They bring music into their classrooms. They show pictures. They let the learners play games, throw a ball around. So that is what our teachers do. They really go the extra mile to ensure that learning is not a boring thing, but fun-filled. Sadly, contributing factors like parental involvement, poverty, lack of resources, or other things from home, those factors aren't looked at. It's only the teachers who are responsible for bad results. Uh, I'm, I mostly applaud the teachers of Namibia because they, I think they are very hardworking um, considering the resources that they have. Of course, there are teachers who are working in great environments like I did, um, but I would say that I, I know of teachers who are really working in hard um, conditions, but then they are focused on getting the child to a certain level that they want them to. Um, so I would say that it's, it's important to really appreciate what you have, the things that you have, and not take anything for granted. I want them to know that Namibian teachers are of very good caliber. The, the quality of, of teachers that we have in our country, I would say, is fairly good. But um, with, with the lack of different things like resources and things, we don't always have access to whatever we would like to have. But we make do with every single thing that we have. And the message is definitely, you know, doesn't matter where you find yourself, what your situation is, just do the best that you can every single day, as long as it's for the children. I always say to my teachers, I'm prepared to fight as long as it's for the children. I've been teaching for a very long time. So I have come from, I started teaching before independence or the year of independence. And at the school where I was teaching then, it was, it was quite restricted and then independence came and all of a sudden things were different. So what happened was that I had to start, start adapting to new situations and new uh, um, challenges because um, the schools became multicultural and here we've got, we've got a class with, with many different children from different backgrounds and cultural groups which makes it so much more interesting. You learn so much about them and about their cultures which I think is very, it's very important as a Namibian. As Namibians we need to know about all the different cultures. Um, if I look at, at, at my classes for this year, um, I have children who speak Afrikaans, I have children who speak English, I have children who speak Oshivambo, I have children who speak um, Nama Damra, I've got children who speak Herero. The, those are their home languages. 
And um, they all come here. We teach them in English, but they still, they still are who they are. They, they are from, they are Uvambu, they are Herero. So it's taken from independence a lot of change and um, you know you need to adapt and you need to learn and um, to get where I am today but I think I've really learned a lot that rather than just being at a school where it's only one group with one language because this is not what Namibia is we are a country with many different groups and many different languages and we should we should be proud of it so, um, yeah, I think that is what I want to, to, to say to the teachers in, in, the, in the United States. They turn and face a different direction every time. <laughs>